So on page 10, section 10, it states that the board must ensure that at least one armed security officer is present during the regular school hours at each district campus. Would this requirement need to be implemented by the 2023-2024 school year? Yes, I'd be on the effective date, they'll need to go in there. One thing that the Senate did provide, and I think you'll be happy to know this, is some of the provisions that actually uh, deal with what the TEA, uh, TEA can do as far as penalizing a school that does not do this are not there with respect to everything else. So, for instance, uh, imposing a conservatorship or other things that the TA has ability to do, if they don't meet this requirement, that penalty is no longer there if they fail to meet this. So, I thought that there was still a conserv uh, an option for but, a conservatorship. But not for this particular provision. For everything else there is, but not for this particular provision. So, that would be if, what, the school doesn't have the right safety features? But yes. Okay. So if it doesn't meet any of the other standards, there's still the opportunity for TEA to step in, impose things. Talking to the Senate and the Senate author on there wanted to make sure TEA could not impose a conservatorship for the armed guard requirement, and so we did not connect those two in there. Okay, so the bill says that the school must develop an alternative standard if they claim a good cause exception. Who decides? If the district has met that standard, is that TEA? It's going to be the agency, TEA. Under the alternative standard, it says that the school district may provide a person to act as a security officer who is a school marshal or a school district employee, or with whom the district contracts who has completed school safety training. Can you define the training for us? So I don't know if that's actually in there, but this is very similar to House Bill 3 as it actually came in and went over. What we basically did is we preferred that it be somebody who has the uh, school district peace officer, school resource officer, commission peace officer is the priority. However, if that does not work because of the funding or availability, they can go into one of these other options. Those other options were available in House Bill 3. Okay, on page 11, line 24, the bill states that someone can carry a handgun on school premises in accordance with written authorization of the district. Is that correct? That is correct. So, under this section, if a district can't afford an officer we described above, who can they authorize to get the 15 to 20 hour training and carry a handgun on campus? So, is it the school, they can go through the school marshal program or the school district employee? that actually meets these criteria, the same as House Bill 3 provided when we had this bill on the floor and the same under current law. Could it be a 19-year-old who's just graduated? This is the same law that's in place regardless of this bill. This does not expand the class of people that could actually be eligible on this. My same question, can it be a 19-year-old? I'm not advised in this bill which one the requirements are. It's defined under the penal code. I don't have that in front of me. All right. And then you said that, uh, so the bill that came back in the House, we had amended it to say that rather than conservatorship, it could be a monitor, but the Senate changed it back to conservatorship. That is correct, which is a very high bar for them to get to. So if the need for a conservator is triggered in the school district under this bill, who pays for the conservator? It's going to be the, I believe it's the TEA, but I'm not advised. I've not worked in that policy area, so I don't want to mislead you or the body. I'm not aware exactly who pays for the conservator. So I know in another instance, it's been the school district. Who assigns the conservator? I assume it's the Commissioner of Education, but again, I'm not advised on that. Thank you. 